Welcome back. As we continue, I suppose, to celebrate our beautiful green and blue planet. Now, the Matrix in Antarctica team, lucky as they are, flew to Mauritius on Saturday, the 26th of February, where they spent about a week learning about the environmental challenges facing the island and some of the solutions that are trying, they are trying to implement there becomes a great litmus test for where the rest of the world is. And the trip to Mauritius will, of course, be followed a little bit later in the year by one to Antarctica. Wow! With the expeditions created to inspire school learners to think about sustainability in the most fundamental way and how they can make a difference in the environment in their own communities and here to chat about the experience is explorer and one of my favorite human beings on the planet Rian Mansa and another one of my favorite human beings by association <laughs> who uh, went on the trip is student Annika LaRue guys welcome back cheers Graham He's still got a darker tan than you, actually, eh? <laughs> I think that's a lifetime of adventuring gives you that. Uh, welcome back, guys. I can't believe it felt like a, a day ago that I was chatting to you about the, this next adventure. How did it go? Have you come back down to Earth? Well, Annika, you said you. What was your answer? It was good. Yo, I, I immediately been, went back to class, so it was like... Mauritius class, so it felt kind of <laughs> surreal, like I was in Mauritius like two seconds ago, but it was amazing and I keep thinking, and while in class, I keep thinking about Mauritius. <laughs> Which is perfectly natural. I think you're going to be, for the rest of the year, you're probably going to be thinking about it until you replace that with a nice Antarctica yeah. experience. What did you guys tackle while you were there? I know it was so important because Mauritius offers us an opportunity to see the environment and what we're doing in that space at play. So what did you guys hone in on? Graeme, just the first um, answer to your first question was that, you know, I went there a little bit with the mindset that, shucks, what are we going to learn in Mauritius? You yeah. know, I, I, I sort of had this feeling because my, Marish, my, my Antarctica idea is grand. I mean, yeah. if we say we're taking it's students to Antarctica, yeah. they're not going to meet other students that have gone to Antarctica. <laughs> Where Mauritius people have gone. And, and, and I really ate um, a large chunk of humble pie. Really? I, I had to, you know, the... The, the planning and the, the, the work that went around us getting that schedule together to be able to learn about the environment in Mauritius was extraordinary on paper. But I wanted to see if it translated and it absolutely did. Oh, so to your second question, um, Annika and I spoke about it earlier this morning. To be 30 meters away from where that um, Sakashu, the, the Japanese oil tank, oil was 300 yeah, yeah, yeah. meters long. And then to actually be snorkeling then to look down. You know, it takes it, Graham, from uh, an idea and a theory that we are... Oh, screwing up the planet and messing it up to actually a reality that look here it is. We might have gone practice. too far, yeah. And then simple stuff like going to a bee farming um, practice inside one of these resorts to go see the guys not just talking about it but actually making it sustainable. And then Annika will tell you now about that farming project we went to. The guys wax lyrical. Oh, we're going to put everything we put on Graham's plate at this fancy resort is going to be from farm to fork. And I was sceptical, you know, I smile and yeah. pose for the photos and stuff, but <laughs> then they actually show us the food that they're farming and then they show us the food they created and nothing came into Mauritius. Everything wow. was created there. What a lesson to learn from a South African perspective. Mm. What was the highlight for you? What, I mean, you obviously did a lot. Definitely. And I'm sure the experience has changed you. What really stood out? What was the, the kicker for you? Uh, my mom asked me the same question, like, <laughs> five times a day, but <laughs> I always say like the smaller things were like amazing for me. Um, having the team there with everyone, everyone gets along very well. It's obviously great that dynamic, but one of the activities that stood out to me is definitely the oil spill. I enjoyed that a lot and hearing from, from the loca locals themselves and um, hearing what they did to contribute and how they cleaned it up and um, how they only recently cleaned it up with two years um, cleaning up, uh, it was amazing to hear their stories. Um, because these are creating kind of vehicles or, or mechanisms that we can employ throughout the world, but we require this generation to be empowered to do so. And that comes with education. And I suppose those moments of self actualization where, as you quite rightly put it, they've got to be there to experience it firsthand. In your mind, now when you look at these moments happening and you see what this brings to these young people's lives going through the, these experiences, why is it so important? Why, why do you do this, man? Graham, it's, it's obvious, man. I, I always saw myself, and a lot of my generation probably see it as if, you know, we've tried hard. We know we've tried hard, but we've just tried. Yeah. There's no space in this 
environmental issue for trying. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's an uncomfortable conversation. So, sure. you know, I sit in circles and I become unpopular very quickly because I say, you're not really doing something. You're talking about recycling. You're talking about making a difference. Where I'm trying to get, and it's five students, but if I can get Annika, and if it's 10% of her thinking to understand that I need doers, not talkers, and if she gets uh, ruffled, her feathers ruffled by it, I know that in five years' time or 10 years' time, this is going to mean something to her. Yeah. She's going to see it in practice at dinner, part dinner parties. It is going to be. So what, do I, yeah. what would I like to see? I would like to see her in a position of power, one day sitting around a boardroom <laughs> table, papers getting shuffled, people <laughs> talking and talking, and she says, you know, when I was in Antarctica with Rion Manso, one thing that sticks with me is that we need action. This board needs to take action. Good. And imagine Bam. she's going to be sitting in that boardroom. But you know why people get irritated with you is because you keep telling them you went to Mauritius. That's, <laughs> that's why people get, get it, it stops there. Um, I'm sure that you're still processing everything, which is great, because I think you hopefully will spend a lifetime processing and then another lifetime processing what you learn in Antarctica. But what has been your biggest take home? Have there been any kind of penny drop moments where you're like, oh, wow, okay, I need to do this. We need to do this. What has been your biggest lesson learned through this? I think uh, Mauritius was definitely a learning experience, like huge and cultural, environmental, everything. And we learned a lot about their people, about like how their people dynamic, like how they work together and how they uh, handle their environment and how they take care of it. And we had seminars and stuff with the hotels. We talked to a lot of people in power and people contributing to the environment. And it was amazing to hear the story, especially like I mentioned before, the oil spill and how the community got together. And I think I just got a refresher of how important community is and how important it is to work together, especially, and how big of a difference a lot of people can make where one one person maybe gave the idea and everyone was like, let's do it. Taking ownership, I think, is a big part of that. And that seems to be what Mauritius have done. They've taken ownership, not just of their brand and how the world sees them, but of their ecology, their ecosystem as well. Oh, man, just imagine, if this is how excited you're feeling about this now, imagine what Antarctica is going to be like. You're still going to get your moment, my brother. Um, incredible <clears throat> stuff. So good to see you here, safe and sound, nice and tanned, and inspired to go and make a difference. We love you, dude. Thank you Cheers. so much Thanks, for, for inspiring this generation because they are the custodians of this beautiful planet that we are now charged with protecting. As Rian pointed out, it's no longer just a conversation or a notion to have. We can't just try. We have to do something about it now.